What a glorious and wonderful afternoon to be in the presence of the Lord. The Lord is good all the time, and all the time the Lord is good. Welcome to the prophetic service and healing and deliverance service, Prophet Eliud and Zafila. Now, uh, break your Bible to the book of Ezekiel chapter 47, and we are going to read from verse 1. The Bible says, and afterward, it me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters. The waters were to the ankles. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. Again, he measured a thousand and brought me through. The waters were to the loins. Afterward, he measured a thousand. And it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen. Waters to swim in. A river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, uh, when I had returned, the Bible says, Behold, the bank of the river, there were very many trees on the one and on the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out toward the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithsoever the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish. Because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live whither the river cometh. And it shall come to pass that the uh, it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi, even unto Eneglim. They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the merry places thereof, and the marishes thereof, shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaves shall not fade. Neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months. Because their waters, they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, we are going to understand the path of the anointing. The path of the anointing. God cannot reveal a vision until he reveals the source. The source of the river is the altar of God. As the water flows, Ezekiel is shown a man measuring the water. Now the first measurement, something goes deep inside the water. The second measurement, the man, go, the man goes before Ezekiel. Then he calls Ezekiel to come. As Ezekiel comes closer, the first measurement is at the ankle. He goes another thousand cubits. The more he moves, the deeper he goes. God calls the church to a deep relationship where things cannot be measured. How do we measure our faith? Even angels measure the territory we are in. The deeper we go in the things of God, the more territory we gain, the more we understand the mind of God. 
in the book of John chapter 8 from verse 32 and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. The level of your freedom is determined by the level of knowledge that you understand God. Man measures your life to know how many years you get or you got. When God looks at you, it is different. Soon, he is going to take you to another level. Ezekiel is in the process of going on. The river comes from the temple of God. Waters issued out of the temple of God. The Bible says that the man continues to measure the waters. And as he continues to measure the waters, Ezekiel is made to pass. Is made to, he is introduced to another level of the water. Rivers pour their water in the oceans. Oceans that receive rivers have got fresh water. Lakes that do not have rivers have got salty water. They are not fit for main consumption. If it receives and no rivers are out of that uh, lake, it means that it is dangerous. In everything that you receive, you need to find a place to give. Out of you shall come forth rivers of living water. If you do not allow it to flow, you will be salty. A sort that destroys. You cannot move a river like moving a boundary. The river serves as a means of transportation. There is something that is in you that shall be transported to the world. The world is aware that you can supply. You serve a God of supply. The Bible says God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Now let us launch forth to verse 4. The Bible says again, he measured a thousand, a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters. The waters were to the knees. As he continues to measure the waters, Ezekiel is introduced to another dimension, another level of the water. Now in verse 4, we are told now the waters reached the knees. The level of the knees. Some people are afraid of the waters. They begin to imagine what happens. At the level of our knees, the mind begins to think a lot. At the level of our knees, the mind begins to think. We are thinking, now what is happening now? The movement is different now because the waters are at the knees. You make sure the leg does not leave the ground. When the waters are at the knees, how many have been to the ocean? How many have been to the river? When you are walking in the river and the waters are at the knees, you make sure the leg does not leave the ground. Now, crossing the river, you don't look down. You look the other end. The knee is a very important place. Knees represent a type of prayer life, a life of praying before God. We seek God on our knees. It is a gesture of reference. It is a sign of obedience. It is a sign of respect. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 8 from verse 54, he arose from the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out towards heaven. On our knees is, is a position of communicating with God. On our knees, it is a sign of surrender. Solomon was on his knees. He had surrendered everything to God. God, here I am. On our knees, it is a place where you are totally depending on God. You need God. Daniel surrendered by kneeling. In the book of Daniel chapter 6 from verse 10. In the book of 1 Kings chapter 18. Read from verse 41. From, from verse 42, 43. So Ahab went... Uh, to drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Camel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. When Ahab goes up to prepare to go, Elijah goes down on his knees. He puts his head between his knees. As he prays, he calls the servant. The knee is a place of prayer. When you want things to happen in life, you use your knees. The spiritual things are discerned spiritually. He comes excited. A small cloud is coming. It brings rain. Elijah comes with the speed of the water. Elijah leaves the mountain of Camel by running. Ahab had already left, but Elijah tucks in his cloth with his leather belt. And Elijah 
takes off with the speed of an anointing that cannot be understood by mortal beings. He overtakes the chariots of Ahab. He ran and overtook the chariots. When you come in the revelation of God, what people have done for years, it will take you a short time. You will be quickened. The Spirit of God will increase the momentum in you. They will say, what has happened to this man? He has been with God. He has been on his knees. He has been with Jesus. They looked at the disciples. They were ordinary and school men. But they figured out and they understood that this man, something made them unique. They had been with Jesus. Jesus was a man who understood the mystery of the knees. A church that stands strong has its people on their knees. In Acts chapter 2, the disciples were waiting on their knees. They were praying. Those that were cowards and could not speak before people stood up and said on the last days, the prophet Joel prophesied, my God, you got to get on your knees. The reason you are not moving is because you are standing. Elijah called the rain on his knees. You need to put your knees on the ground. James was killed because he was the anchor of prayer. He had knees like hooves of a camel. He knew how to use his feet well. They killed James. Herod put James to death and then he attacked Peter. But the church was praying. The next person was Peter. The church had learned to pray like James. They went on their knees and prayed for Peter. Peter came out of prison. God did not keep quiet. He commanded his angels to free Peter. Angels have got to be released, but they were waiting for a command. They were waiting for your prayers. You need to get on your knees. The effective prayer of a righteous man, a violet match. The measurement of water was the measurement of your prayer life. A thousand cubits is a level of warfare. The enemy wants to scare you. Ezekiel is, is moved to another level. One shall chase a thousand. Two shall chase ten thousand. Acts chapter 13. As they kept on praying. In prayer, it is a time of separation. It is a, it is a time that it's, it's a time where you consecrate yourself. You are in your closet. You communicate with your maker. It is from there we begin to move. The knee is an important part of the body. But for movement, we need the knees. It is a place of continuous growth. It is a place that we begin to hear the deeper calling. In verse 4 to verse 5. The Bible says he measured of another a thousand cubits. But now it was a river. I, it was a river. A river that I could not cross. A thousand cubits and led me through the water that was up to the west or the loins. A, a, the man does not want Ezekiel to be contented with one level. God wants us to grow from faith to faith. God speaks to Moses, come up Peter. And stay up here and I will speak to you. God is never pleased for you to remain in one level. We do not serve a God of stagnation. In the beginning, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was not without form and void. And God and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. When everything was at a standstill, something was moving, the Holy Spirit. And the next thing God spoke and he saw that it was good. Let there be light. You need to prepare to grow because the kingdom of God is a kingdom of growth. In this prophetic service, there are people who will move in a realm that they have never encountered before. The mantles that will fall upon the people upon this service... They are not just mantles. They are kingdomless legislations and dimensions and platforms. Many shall be launched into realms they have never encountered before. Jesus talks of a kingdom that has got no end, no limitation. He kept on measuring the waters. It came to the level of the loins. Now the loins is the distance between your knees and your chest. It carries a very sensitive part of your body, the loins. Now, Ezekiel is focused on what he is told. 
he obeys. As the man measures the waters, he introduces Ezekiel to another realm, another dimension, another level. So when the water reaches the loins, that is where it is called the river. Ezekiel 47 from verse 5. But now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and it was deep enough to swim in. Now from the loins, it is called a river. The result of God. When you try to explain it, you have no words. Miracles become natural. Miracles become something that people would encounter without fear. To people, they are supernatural. His feet could not touch the ground because the level of water had increased. The word will carry the revelation, understanding of God. You cannot be compared with anyone. When the word of God is revealed, the keeper of the word is awakened. One thing with the river, anything that the river does not like, it will be thrown outside. When you die in the water, you are thrown in the side. Water does not like dead things. God does not want you to die with the water. You got to release life. It is now a river. Out of you shall come forth rivers of living water. A fountain of living water shall come out of you. You become a portal, a channel of revelation, a channel of life. We are swimming to the level of healing now. The river has reached the loins. We have started with the ankle. The waters were at the ankle. As Ezekiel is introduced, then the waters were at the knees. Now we see it is called a river because the water are now at the loins. The water came from the tabernacle and the river begins to pick momentum. The river is full. It takes its own direction. It cannot be stopped by man. It is beyond understanding now. Miracles are happening. Abraham was told by God, out of thy loins shall come forth kings. This man cannot measure anymore because it is now a river. Have you seen this? Can you see what God is doing? Can you see what God is just about to launch you in another realm? There are two things that happen when you go swimming. How many of you have gone swimming here? Number one, when you go swimming, there are those that enjoy. Number two, when you go swimming, there are those that die or they drown in the water. But now Ezekiel enjoys the swimming. From there you cannot measure again. Nobody will measure the level of anointing in your lives. A time has come to swim in the blessings of the Lord. It is the level of anointing. They will try to stop you but they can do nothing because you have reached the level of swimming. It is time to swim in the blessings of the Lord. It began as water. Now it is water in the name of a river. When the river begins, you cannot stop it. No man can stop has begun in your life. There is one man who tried to stop the river and God said, I am speaking again. Your word is like fire shut in my bones. It was in his spirit. Psalms chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditated day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields its fruit in a season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. There is no river with no trees at the side. God will put you in a position to watch him heal people. God will marvel so many people before this service ends. A dimension, a realm that has never been encountered in this ministry will begin to manifest upon this platform. Ezekiel sees life. The trees were all alive. The waters carried something special, healing. The word has power to heal. Greater is he that is in us than him that is in the world. The word has got power to bring life where there is death. It went through the desert. God is leading you towards the desert, the wilderness. They need comfort. In the desert, they need encouragement in the wilderness. A place where everything is dusty, lonely, is left alone. Everyone is crying. They need a miracle. Oh my God. Oh my God.
God is addressing something here. In the book of Genesis chapter 35 from verse 11, God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and the company of nations shall come from you and kings shall spring from you. When God promised Abraham, he did not specify where the nations would come from. God addresses Jacob. He begins to address the issues of our lives. God is a God of multiplication. People will multiply. They will have children. But the people of God, the sons of God, shall have kings. It is Jacob who had many children, 12 children. When Jesus came, he chose 12 disciples. The tabernacle had 12 loaves of bread. 12 is a governmental number. Out of your loins shall comfort kings, and they shall rule. God continues to say, your sons shall possess the gates of their enemies. Kings have got authority. The word of a king is final. Jacob's children shall dominate the land. They shall possess the gates of their enemies. The result of your prayers are being answered. After we spend time praying, we will multiply. We shall see signs and wonders. We are multiplying that which God has given. Genesis chapter 1 verse 12. God blessed them. God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion. Prayer is communion and communion is fellowship. You cannot have a child if you have no time of communion. We cannot spend time with God and not receive a seed. It is only Jezebel who destroyed every seed. She could not hear God. She was rebellious. Biologically, the seed is kept at the west or the loins. 2 Kings chapter 9 from verse 1. Then Elisha, the prophet, called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Guard up your loins and take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. Loins speak of the reproductive part of our lives. When we have allowed the word of God to dwell in our lives, that word begins to produce results. The word has been measured. The waters are not stagnant. The waters are on the move. The river is not stagnant. Stagnant water collect that. They stink. Allow the word of God to refresh in you. Allow God to take you to another level all the time. First Peter from verse 1. Chapter 1 from verse 13. Guard the loins of the mind. The mind has got a loin. The loin of your mind has to be guarded. Our mind likes wandering, having wrong imaginations. In Philippians, the Bible says, let the mind which is in Christ be in you. Christ had compassions, always thought of how he would reach the people. He kept his mind on the things of the Father. Loins are places of production. If you don't guard up your mind, it will produce fear. A wrong image of yourself. What is fear? False evidence appearing real. Allow your mind to produce the positive and not the negative. People can break your heart, but guard your mind. Allow your mind to be focused on God. You are either allowing the physical production or a spiritual production in your life. Every time you spend time with God, God is busy measuring your reproduction. When we remain in God, he shall answer our prayers. He shall answer our prayers. You are the only one who will cause a river to flow in the desert. You are the only person chosen to make that river flow in your family. It shall come to pass. They have mocked you. They have put you in a particular class of people. They have said so many things. I want you to understand. Whatever they have decreed and they have meant to happen for you, it shall not come to pass. Wickedness shall not arise the second time. Oppression shall not rise up the second time. This time, they will see your God. They will feel him. They will praise him. Everything that liveth, that moveth, whichsoever, whichsoever the river shall pass, where the river comes into contact with anything, it shall have life. There shall be healing. It shall come to pass when they touch you, they will feel life passing from you. They shall live. Jesus 
comes and says, your brother shall live again. When Lazarus was dead, they put him in a tomb. Jesus said, where have you put him? And then he calls Lazarus. Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes out alive. No one took Lazarus from the grave. Lazarus had the voice of Jesus. And something catapulted from the corridors of eternity into time. And a force of life entered Lazarus. Whatever had eaten the flesh of Lazarus began to vomit him out. Whoever has eaten you will vomit you. Whoever has eaten your property, your riches, they will vomit it out. Whoever has taken your star, they will vomit your star. Oh my God. Now, there is fish. Fish speaks about money. Judas kept money. Jesus had fish which kept money. Out of you will come forth life. Any fish that comes in contact with you shall have life. Them that are dead spiritually shall live again. The discouraged will be encouraged. You come for the service to be serviced. When you come to the church, we service you. If you want to enjoy your car, the reason as to why we slow down is because we are not serviced. Everywhere you go, testimonies will be coming from there. People will associate with people who have life. How many will go to the mortuary and stay with those people? People alive associate with people who are alive. There are two things for the people in the mortuary who are alive. You either go to the mortuary to resurrect the dead or you go to take your dead there and bury your dead. Give life where there is no life. When you have life, you will attract life. You will produce life. In verse 10, it shall come to pass. Let the river continue gaining momentum. You need not stay in the same position as you are in. Do something that brings healing. We carry the potential to allow healing power. You carry the river. You carry life. You carry the answer. You have an exhortation. In the book of Amos, chapter 9, from verse 15, And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled out of their land which I have given them, says the Lord your God. Luke chapter 5, from verse 17, And it shall come to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, and it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The spiritual man makes judgment about, about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. May this river empower you, the river of revelation, the river of the giftings of the Holy Ghost, a supernatural dimensions of encounter be your portion. You are coming out of this service serviced in Jesus' mighty name. Oria mashakata pa letesko ti kapara eredika sote para fire of God will consume the witches of your land, the witches and the enchanters and the diviners that do not want to vacate that land. They will die this day in the name of Jesus. I am releasing a judgmental anointing upon you. As you go back to your homes, you will find everything turned around. Whatever was stopping you from prospering, it has vacated your homes. Poverty has died. Wickedness shall not arise the second time. Enchantment and divination dies at the sound of my voice. In Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. Receive this anointing. The resurrection mantle in the name of Jesus. And I decree your life will never remain the same again. In Jesus' mighty name, give God a mighty hand clap.